Do you ever feel like you were born too late? Maybe born in the wrong era? Because there's so much stuff that you love from the past, like design or architecture or music or whatever. I sometimes feel that way. I mean, I'm glad that I was born when I was born, because everything has now you know, led up to this point. But I have always been fascinated by history in general. But if I had a time machine, I would probably go back to about 1958 and then live through a few years and watch history unfold and enjoy the look and the clothes and the music and all that stuff, you know? And so what I'm going to do today is, helped along by brush winner Mike Vance and care package giver Mike, um, he sent me a vintage tube of Colgate shaving cream. Now, from what I can tell from the graphic design, this is either from the mid to late 1960s or maybe very early 1970. There is no date on it, unfortunately, but it's brand new in the box. It's still got its plastic wrapping on it unless somebody else put that on, but no, it looks like manufacture. This is the original wrapping on this Colgate lather shaving cream. So this has inspired me today to do a full vintage Shave. Almost full. Almost. I'll tell you why in a second why it's almost full and not complete. So I'm going to use this vintage, we'll call it 1960s shaving cream, and I'm going to shave it with a 1966 Gillette Slim razor, adjustable. Now I'm not going to use the vintage razor blades that are in this Gillette razor blade dispenser because they're a little dull and I've used them before and uh, they didn't hold their edge over time. So I want to have a good shave with this lather, but here's the vintage blue, let me show you how it works, you just slide it out the bottom there and they're, they're like black, they look kind of cool, they're called blue blades. Anyway, I'm not going to use those, I'm going to use a feather blade because I want to get a really great shave. And Here's a vintage brush that was re-knotted. They put a new badger hair knot in it for me, but the handle has got to be, I mean, by this design, it almost looks like Art Deco, like 1930s. So this would have been around in the 60s, this handle. So I, I'm not going to use this because I'm not very good at lathering with this, and I want to give this lather, you know, my utmost attention. So I'm going to use my synthetic, but I've got this here next to the sink to add to it. So I got the two things I'm not going to use, but that were around in the 1960s. And then finally, the aftershave, I'm gonna use the vintage Yardley's English Lavender from the 1950s. So somebody purchased this in the 1950s and obviously didn't use too much of it. So this was around in the 60s as well. So let's look at all the things that were, I have here for this shave. I'm gonna hold them all up. So there we go. Thumbnail. So I got a 60s razor, a, 60, a brush that was around in the 60s, lather from the 60s aftershave that was around in the 60s and some blades from the 1960s. I said 60s too many times. All right, let's get to shaving. So, I just took a shower, did my hair. Got the vintage Barbasol ad back there. Thanks again, Mike Vance. Much love to you and your family. All right, I put some water on my face because I always do that right before. And like I said, I'm gonna use this. I'm not gonna use a bowl because I don't normally bowl lather. I'm gonna use my face. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna use my face. So I'm gonna open this thing for the first time. It has never been opened. Let's see, where is, I found the spot where you're supposed to start. All right. It feels kind of weird opening it after all this time. It's like, oh, I feel like I should keep it in, but they intended for it to be used. Thanks again, Mike, for sending this to me. It's fascinating. I love using new old stock. It's amazing how many old products you can still find for sale, including food products. I mean, you can find an old package of popcorn from the 1930s and, and, and make popcorn out of it. I don't know if it would taste right, but all right. Here it is. Let's see what the tube looks like inside. This is the Colgate Lather Shaving Cream, small size. There might be a date on the inside. Let's see. Try new Colgate aftershave lotion to refresh your skin. Use Colgate Dental Cream with Gardol. That's what it says on the little ends here. I wonder if it says something on the other side. I'm going to open both ends, see if it says the same thing. Oh, no, it says, stop body odor, check perspiration with new Vito spray deodorant. It's for men, too. Vito. And then on the other flap, it says, remove aftershave shine with Colgate talc for men. So they're advertising everything on these little flaps. And there's the tube. Oh, you can't see it. Let's take the tube out. Here we go. Put the box back down here. Save that. Colgate Lather Shaving Cream. Finish with Colgate Talc for men, again. Oh, there's no date. 
Okay, so it says, for a fast, smooth shave. Note how this light, fine textured lather completely softens tough whiskers, lets you shave clean, close, easy, leaves your face smooth and comfortable. Directions. For best results, first wash face with warm, with soap and warm water. All right, done. Then lather and shave. To make shaving comfort complete, finish with Colgate talc. Boy, they're pushing the talc. They are pushing the Colgate talc. Net weight, 0.75 ounces. Colgate, Colgate Palm Olive Company, Jersey City, New Jersey, made in the U.S. of A. There is a stamp on the little thing at the bottom, but I don't know what number. I can't quite read it. It's like 4715. I don't think that's a date code. Anyway, here it is. Shaving cream. Untouched, unopened, hasn't seen the light of date in over 50 years. Ooh, it's a little discolored. You see the... It's a little bit yellow. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to squirt a little bit out. Oh, there's some bubbles coming out. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the top back on. I'm going to squish the tube a little bit to kind of mix it up. It's a metal tube, by the way. It's one of those old-fashioned, old-school metal tubes before they started making them out of, like, this plasticky stuff that they have. So it's metal. I know I'm, I'm kind of making it wrinkly. The, the metal is wrinkling as I do this, but I kind of want to mix it up so that I can try to get a lather out of it. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but let's see if it will together, shall we? Okay. All right. Unscrew the top. This is, that almost did something. I'm going to squirt a little bit out, and we'll see what it looks like. Ooh. Ooh, it's a little... <laughs> it's a little... <laughs> it's kind of the color of pus. It's, ooh, it smells a little weird. I'm gonna try it anyway, dang it. I'm gonna, it's, it's a little liquidy. Ooh, oh, it's a little crunchy too. Hold on a second, I might need to, uh, I might need to use a bowl for this, hold on. <laughs> this is uh, just me trying this out with you. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the whole, I'm gonna squirt the whole tube in here, see if there's anything solid. It feels kind of solid. Ooh, I think there's some solids that don't wanna come out. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's kind of gross. That's kind of gross, and it smells kind of gross. Hold on, I'm gonna. <laughs> that is disgusting looking. All right, I'm gonna squirt the whole dang thing in here. Oh, okay, there it is. Kind of a liquidy pus yellow. <laughs> oh no, what am I getting myself into? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dial nine one on my phone, and then if I right before I collapse, I'll dial the last number. So it smells soapy. And a little uh, spicy. <clears throat> it's kind of making my throat burn. Here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna put some more water on my face. I'm gonna dip my synthetic brush into, well, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my other synthetic brush, the one I, I don't really use anymore. Oh no, there goes the Jolly Rancher. I'm gonna use this one, the satin tip. Um, so in case it like dissolves the tip, I'll, I won't matter because I can, I don't use this one much anymore since I got the, the good ones from West Coast Shaving. All right. Ah, oh, boy. Let's see, I'm going to dip this in here. I'm going to see if it'll, before I put it on my face, because it's kind of, ooh, it's kind of chunky. It's got like crystals in it. Does soap crystallize after 50 years? I'm going to see if it'll even lather on my hand first before I do anything. Well. It is lathering. Look at that. Hmm. Maybe those are just like... That's not doing too bad of a job, lathering. Should I go for it? Do I dare? That's doing pretty good lather. Still smells kind of spicy and, and old. That's all I can say. Spicy, old, and soapy. Oh, which I guess is that's what it is. All right. Whew. All right. Oh my goodness. I'm more, more nervous using this than I was the uh, straight razor a while back. Okay, I'm going to put some more water on this thing. It's not smoking. There is no smoke coming off of it, so that's good. All right. I only live once, right? I'm going to try not to get it in my mouth. Yeah. That's... That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Dainty. Oh. I'm also going to try not to nick myself, because God knows what moon virus I might get from this. <laughs> All right. I might actually travel back in time. But, you know, for, seeing as how it's been locked up for the better part of 50 years, 
it's lathering better than some modern shaving cream, I'll tell you that. Is it burning? No, it's not burning. <laughs> Tastes like burning. And it's not a terrible smell. It just doesn't smell probably like it did originally. Now, I don't know what it smelled like originally. Nobody probably remembers that. But I tell you what, I'm gonna need all the alcohol in this afterward to kill any weird germs that I might get. Okay, I'm dipping the razor in. Got a feather blade in here, not one of these vintage Gillettes because I want to be able to control, you know, my shave to a certain extent while still trying to do a, a vintage shave, you know, a total vintage shave. Not total. Okay, I'm going to do very lightly because I don't want to nick myself. <laughs> well, it seems to be working, you know. I mean, it's, uh, I'm going to keep it out of my mouth, keep it out of my eyes. Because there are weird little crystals. It's mostly liquidy, but there's crystals. It's almost like a really like wet gruel, but with crystals in it instead of, uh, you know, like oatmeal bits. But, you know what the, you know what that is? Even though it doesn't mention it, I think that's a little bit of menthol. I could be fooling myself, but I think that might be a little bit of menthol in there. Keep my mouth closed when I do this part. Do not ingest 50-year-old Colgate shaving cream. But it's actually working. It still feels slick, you know, it's leaving a, it's not drying my skin out. And this 1966 Gillette Slim Adjustable is doing well. The Gillette Slim Adjustable is like the affordable fat boy. It's got like all the features of the fat boy, just slimmer and less expensive on eBay. Or in antique stores, if you see it, because everybody's put so much importance on the fat boy, then for now at least they're overlooking the slim. Hopefully they won't be watching this video and saying, hey, I should charge more for the slim. Don't, don't. It's not a very good razor. It's terrible. The fat boy is the only way to go. All right. I'm still feeling slightly nervous about this, but not too much. I know I've mentioned it before, but Steve, MRE, uh, Steve1989, has a channel where he opens uh, MREs, which are meals ready to eat, or old K rations and C rations from World War II, uh, Vietnam War, and he eats this food. He actually ingests food that is 50, sometimes 75. Even one time he ate some Civil War hardtack from the 1860s. So I'm not ingesting this stuff. It's just on my skin and hopefully not going into my skin and causing some weird effect. Okay, well, there's the first pass. All right. So far, so good, folks. I mean, I'm going to put some more warm water on my face and lather up again carefully. Carefully. Normally, I just go right across my lips. I'm not going to this time. Those could be, it does feel slightly mentholated. So those could be menthol crystals, although it's a mild menthol, but it's not bad, actually. I, you know, I've never tried any modern Colgate shaving creams, so I'm not sure how they would compare scent-wise or... But it's doing a pretty good job. It's lathering very well. I mean, it looks terrible in the bowl, but it's, <laughs> it's feeling okay on the face. All right, I'm going to do a second pass. I got off pretty much nick-free the first time. I don't think I maybe nicked my neck. Thanks again to Mike and his family for being such good friends of the channel. And everybody that was watching the live stream when I opened that giant care package on Saturday, that was so cool, it was fun. So many positive people out there, it's great. I really appreciate it. This is getting me ready towards using the vintage Barbasol tube, which I will be using coming up uh, around my birthday. So that's coming up in about, what, two weeks? Yeah, I think two weeks. This is my first vintage shaving cream I've ever used. I've had that vintage Barbasol tube for a while, the one that's in the advertisement right there. Right there. I'm getting good at this weatherman thing. Pointing in reverse from how you're looking on the screen. 
but I've never used a, I've never used, I've used vintage uh, razors, blades, aftershaves, brushes, but never shaving cream. Because it's, you know, vintage shaving cream is obviously much more, you know, inclined to have been thrown away. Because people would see it and say, oh, there's no value in this anymore. There's still a little value. I guess they, Colgate. I wish I could try some of their men's talc, though. They got it in my head. I need to use some men's talc. Maybe I'll look on eBay, see if there is any. Speaking of vintage aftershaves, one of, uh, one of the subscribers and viewers and friends of the channel is a, a gentleman whose screen name is Elvis Presley. And uh, if you know anything about Elvis, and I absolutely love and am fascinated by Elvis, if you've never been to Graceland, you should go if you get the chance or ability to do so. And one of Elvis's favorite aftershaves slash colognes was Brute. And so I keep getting people asking me to do a Brute aftershave shave thing. And so I found some cheap vintage Brute from about 1970, from what I can tell. I'll be able to tell better when, I, when it arrives. But so I'll be doing that sometime soon. So there's another vintage product I'm gonna try out. I'm gonna go for a third. I got a little nick, but you know what? I'm gonna let the vintage Yardley English Lavert lather take care of that then I'll probably wash my whole head in alcohol afterwards <laughs> it just it's uh, it's not a pleasant smell necessarily it does have a little bit of a musty spicy it's not metallic but it's kind of dirty okay very lightly very lightly And we'll see how my skin feels afterwards. I did get a little nick on my chin there. So if I, if I gain some sort of weird uh, superpowers from this, you'll know the reason why. 1960s superpowers. My superpower is I can wear a skinny tie all the time. And talk about the jet age. Ah, the jet age. Okay. <laughs> I know. It's like, I'm, I'm running into that now when I, when I see uh, the younger generations, like the millennials talk about, they have this, uh, this fondness for the 1990s. And I'm like, ugh, the 90s, blech. And then they're like, well, I wish I could go to the 90s. And that's why I feel about the 50s and 60s. If you live through it, it's not that cool, right? Because you know, it's like, oh, it's just normal life. But when you look at it through the lens of not having been there, you can romanticize anything, I guess. Like I said, I wouldn't want to go back to the social norms of the 1960s. But uh, the architecture, the music, the clothes, a lot of cool stuff. And I mean like early 60s, like Mad Men's, not like hippies 60s. I start to lose interest in the 60s about 1967. I like the late 50s, early 60s Mad Men era. Everything was like just clean and tidy and I like that. All right. I'm not gonna be uh, fastidious about the little spots I get because I wanna wash this off my face. Cold water. I do feel menthol, I do feel a tingle. I don't know if that's, if I should be feeling that. Ooh. But let's get that off of there. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wash the rest of this down the sink. Let's watch it pour out. Oh. You that looks really gross. <laughs> the color, it's pus colored. I mean, yeah, there's no other way to describe it. It's pus colored. At least when it foamed up, it, it was white. Oof. All right. <laughs> Dry my face off and quickly, as quick as I can, put some aftershave on to kill anything that might be creeping into my bloodstream. Hold on, let me put the top back on. So I'm going to save this even though it's all out of it now. I wanted to make sure I got the best, the heart of the, uh, of the shaving cream. This is a cool little box. Design also, the design, graphic design from that period I love. I was a graphic artist and I guess I still am for, for many, many years. Put that in the... Uh, down there in the drawer, I'm going to wash out the brush. I know, I know I haven't done the aftershave yet. Whew, it's, got, it's got a funky smell. <laughs> it's got a lingering kind of funk to it. All right, time for the Yardley's English Lavender. 
This was Frank Sinatra's favorite aftershave for the longest time. And there's a picture of him. I know I did it on when I first showed this. There's a picture of him with some of this on his, uh, the counter in his bathroom. So I got the exact model, the exact bottle, the exact uh, scent, I would assume. It's probably diminished over the years, but it's got a nice pleasant scent. And they still make Yardley's English Lavender. There we go. But from what I understand, they changed the scent sometime in the 60s and he didn't like it anymore. So this is the original scent that he did like. And it didn't burn too bad. That's good. That's good. Whew, not like that, uh, that Cella cool, man. Yardley's English. Let me dry this thing off. So that the, the paper retains its cool look. All right. I survived, folks. I did it. I did it. I think that's it. I'm looking around. I always do this. I look around and say, did I forget anything? And I don't think I did. Yeah. Didn't use this, but I got the sign for it. All right, everybody. That is my vintage, almost, 1960s shave. Thanks again to Mike Vance, and thank you to everybody that is so kind and uh, on this channel. Uh, I really appreciate all of you. Thank you for watching. I don't know what's coming up on Friday. I'll figure it out then. And uh, that's it. This is really interesting. It's fascinating. If you can't go back in time, you could at least use some stuff that came to you from that time. So I like that. That's cool. All right. That's it. I'm trying to, I'm lingering, aren't I? Should I linger longer? No, that's enough. All right. See everybody on Friday.